So the Tableau 10 beta just came out, and one of my favorite new features is cross-database joins. Think about all the times that you've had to use data blending when actually you would have preferred to use a join. But the reason you had to use data blending is because you had two different data sources. Let's say, for example, a text file and a SQL Server database. Well, cross-database joins help solve that problem for you. So I thought I'd walk you through an example. To start, what I've done is I went to the Tyco project and I downloaded measles data by state for the years 19, or, or 2000, 1928 to 2003. So let's go ahead and connect to that data source. So I'm going to click on text file. I'm going to choose the measles cases and open that. And you'll see the data is organized with my states going all the way across. So I'm going to highlight all of my states. Oh, need to go all the way to the end. Highlight all of my states, make sure they're all highlighted. Okay, click on the little drop down and then click on pivot. And what Tableau is going to do is it's going to make the table long instead. So now what I want to do is I want to rename this to state, rename this one to cases. Change the data type. So I'm going to make this one, this one string, which is okay, but I need to assign it a geographic role of state. And then the cases, I want to make a whole number. All right, so now to show you what the cross database join does, I'm going to click on add another connection. And this time I'm going to join to an Excel file, which is just something I created for to help me create a trellis layout. So I'm going to hit OK or hit open. And you'll see I now have a second connection here. One is a text file, one is my new Excel file. And I'm going to drag that sheet into the view. And Tableau presents me with the join menu. And from here, I'm going to pick year. And I'm going to join it to my year. And there you go. Just like that, I've, cr I've created a join between two disparate data sets. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this extra year field because I don't need it. From there, I can go to my sheet. And now I need to move my rows and columns. These are numbers, but I want them to be dimensions. And then I also want my cases to be a measure. And I want my, the default for my years to be discrete. OK, great. So how can we build, build a typical view here? So a lot of times what we'll see is we'll see people uh, view a chart like this. Or they'll start, I'm sorry, not by not put it on the label. There we go. So this is a typical way that people have always done analysis in the past. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a filter and I'm going to exclude Alabama and, or I'm sorry, Alaska and Hawaii. Hit OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply that to all sheets. OK. So I just did that for simplicity. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to years and states that have at least one case. OK, great. Now this is a typical way that people have always done data analysis in Excel. So you'll see a simple table like this. We've all done it, and we think this is great for, for aiding understanding. So let's call this our table. And then let's go ahead and duplicate this sheet, and let's look at a better way to do this. Just by simply moving cases to color, we get a totally different view. Tableau automatically creates a heat map for us. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to default my, I'm going to change the default colors for my cases. I'm going to set it to orange to blue, reverse it so that reds are my high numbers. I'm going to set the center to 4000 and then I'm going to set the center to 500. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and add like maybe a white border around these. And now when I view this, when I set it to fit entire view, you can see a totally different story. Back over here in our table, if we scroll across to about 1960, the, the mid-1960s, you can see that we're in the thousands and then suddenly it starts to drop off around 1967. Maybe some states it drops off sooner. Well, viewing the data visually in a table like this, you can see a much different story. So this heat map shows us that in the mid-1960s, there was clearly, uh, this is when 1963 is when the measles vaccine was introduced to the public. And you can see uh, how visually displaying the data instead of a table really makes this pop. So let's do a little bit of cleanup here. First, I'm going to change my year to continuous. I'm going to change my mark type to a square. And then just uptick the size a little bit. All right. And now my years go from 1928 to 2003. So I'm going to fix my axis to actually go from 1924, uh, 1920, no, I'm sorry, 1927 to 2004. So one year on either side. That way it still fits in the view nice and neat. 
Okay, and then from here, I'm going to just go ahead and get rid of my title. I meant to do that as well. And maybe I'll add a reference line, a constant reference line at 1963. And for the label, I could do a custom and I could just say vaccine introduced. And let's make it a black line and let's make it nice and nice and wide. So hit OK. And now you can see I've got this line. Uh, I want to go ahead and format my reference line. Nope, if I can tick on it. There we go. That's uh, a little bit tricky to tick on. So uh, edit reference line. Um, let's see here. Okay, so uh, normally I would be able to tick on this, but it looks like it's just being a little bit finicky trying to get me to, to tick on it. But what I would probably do is reformat this so that the vaccine introduced is a little easier to read, but I'm having a little bit of trouble uh, clicking on my reference line. Okay, so this is one way that we could visually display this data. So let's call this our heat map. But another way might be, let's go ahead and duplicate the sheet. And let's take year, state, cases. Let's take these all off the view. Okay, oh, state, cases. Okay, so now we're left with just a single block. Let's set it to automatic. And now if I double click on state, I should get a map. All right, I need to fix my locations because I'm in, uh, by default, it picks up, Tableau will pick up your current location. So let's pick United States, hit OK. And now you can see I've got a dot for each state. So uh, now what I could do is I could take cases and put that on color and I get a nice filled map. Uh, maybe in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do no borders and you'll see why in a minute. And then I'm gonna set the halo to none as well. Okay, now to create a trellis plot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my columns field to the columns, my rows field to the rows, and uh, we can leave that like that for now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and format my map layers and I'm going to turn off everything. So I don't care for any of the any of the background at all. All right, so let's close that. And uh, the reason I want to do that is because now if I start to kind of zoom in on this view a little bit, so let's make these maps smaller so that it all fits into a single view. When I go into presentation mode, and let's go ahead and hide the color shelf, you can see maybe if I adjust these just ever so slightly more, uh, and then let's go ahead and it looks like if we go ahead and hide our headers now you'll see it fits in here nice and neat maybe let's go ahead and let's hide our view toolbar okay so now you can see in a single view we can see the the um, the measles academic epidemic and how it was clearly wiped out somewhere around here around this is 19 uh, oh, I need to sorry I need to go back to my map let me get out of presentation mode and I meant to put map on the detail, okay? And I don't want columns and rows in my tooltips, so I'm just gonna tick on these and do unclude in tooltip. And now when you hover over, I can see the year, the state, and the number of cases. Okay, so let's go back into presentation mode. Sorry about that. And you can see here, around 1966, there were still a lot of cases, but then really quickly, except for Texas, which looks like, I'm not exactly sure why Texas took uh, longer to uh, eradicate the disease, um, but you can see that uh, the, the number of cases is, um, has clearly wiped out right around here. So the reason I'm showing you this is not only to show you the cross database joins, but also to show you how visualizing data is much more powerful and tells a much more powerful story than just visualizing data in a table. So I hope you enjoyed that. And if you uh, have anything else, just let me know.